Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. We have the indefinite integral of x to the 8th over 1 plus x to the 6th quantity squared dx. So go ahead, pause the video on your own. This was sent in by a loyal subscriber, and I hope you all enjoy solving it as much as I did. So the denominator is kind of reminding me of something that would involve tan inverse. So I want to see if I can make it be 1 plus some variable quantity squared. So I'm leaning towards making a u sub. And let me think of this x to the sixth as x cubed squared. So let's explore what would happen if we go ahead and let u equal x cubed. Now, you guys, this is going to work out because, you know, I pre-solved the problem. But that's a lot of the time how this process works. You just explore. You guess a substitution, not willy-nilly, based on what looks like it'll, you know, follow through nicely. And then you have to see it out. Okay, so if we differentiate du is going to be 3x squared dx. Now, do I have an x squared dx? I feel like I can squeeze one out of here, this x to the eighth dx. So I'm going to give it my best shot. One third du is going to equal x squared dx. And then, you know, that x to the eighth, if all I need is an x squared from it, that's not a problem. I'll have x to the sixth left over. And x to the sixth, that's perfect, because that's x cubed times x cubed. So that's x cubed squared. And then I've got another x squared. So I'm feeling good. I can rewrite the entire integrand in terms of u. So let's go ahead and do it. If you like, let's um, rewrite it first, just broken down more. So x to the eighth is x cubed times x cubed times x squared. Let me put the dx up there with it just to make it very obvious. And then over 1 plus x to the sixth is x cubed squared. All of this is squared. Good? Okay, perfect. So this x squared dx, x squared dx will become one third du. Take the one third outside, it'll be nicer. Then we just have du hanging out here. Each of these x cubes is a u. That's a u. This is a u. So what are we left with? We just have u squared over one plus u squared squared. Okay. So now we have to reassess. Did we make things better? I think so. How do we proceed from here? Can we do another substitution? Unfortunately, no. So it's gonna be trig sub time because we have this one plus u squared. You could do it now, or what I did was I played around with the integrand just a wee bit before I did my trig sub. So I added one and subtracted one, which means now I have one third times the integral u squared plus one over 1 plus u squared squared minus 1 over 1 plus u squared squared, just to kind of simplify things a little bit, du. And then from here, what do we have? This is 1 third integral. Now notice u squared plus 1 will cancel with one of the u squared plus 1s in the denominator. So I just have 1 over 1 plus u squared minus, and then this one stays squared down there. Okay. Du. So let's break this into two little baby integrals that we'll work on. This will be number one. This will be number two. Are we good? Okay, perfect. So integral number one, I'll worry about the one third later. How's that sound? One over one plus u squared du. That's going to be tan inverse of u. I'm going to say plus c1. I'll save the final c with no subscript for the end of the problem. And then what about this second integral? One over 1 plus u squared squared. Oh, why, oh, why did it have to be squared? So that we could show everybody how good we are at trig sub. So which trig substitution do we use? Since we have a variable quantity squared plus a constant, we're going to use tangent theta. So we're going to let u be tangent theta. And then du is secant squared theta d theta. Good. So now let's rewrite the whole integral in terms of theta. So we'll have 1 over 1 plus u squared is now 1 plus tan squared theta squared. And then du is secant squared theta d theta. Perfect. Okay, so let's clean this guy up. Now remember, the whole point of trig sub is that so you can use your Pythagorean identities to simplify the integrand. So this 1 plus tan squared squared, I'm going to replace with secant squared theta squared, like so. So then secant squared will cancel with one of the secant squareds in the bottom. And 1 over secant squared is, that's it. It's cosine squared theta d theta. Good. 
From here, you should be like a little math robot. You go, uh huh, I'm gonna use my identity, one half, one plus cosine two theta. There's just no other way to do it. So don't dilly dally. And then from here, just integrate term by term. So we've got one half theta plus one half sine two theta plus C two. Now we have to get back to use. And so we're gonna have to draw a triangle. When we draw a triangle, remember, it needs to be a triangle in terms of theta, not two theta. So yes, we need to bust out our double angle identity, two sine theta, cosine theta, and ooh, that two and the one half will cancel. That's beautiful. So I've got one half times theta plus sine theta, cosine theta, plus C2. So triangle time. We know we let u be tangent theta, which means u over one is equal to tangent theta. So that means the ratio of the opposite over adjacent side should be u over one. And then the hypotenuse, square root of one plus u squared. Okay, so then let's rewrite everything in terms of u. Plain old theta, I mean, you have choices. You could let it be, you know, almost any inverse trig function, so long as you express it correctly in terms of the triangle, but typically we use the one that we utilized for the trig set. So I'm gonna call it tan inverse of u plus sine theta. Sine theta is gonna be opposite over hypotenuse. So that's u over square root one plus u squared. And then cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse square root of one plus u squared plus c2. Okay, and then this cleans up nicely. So this is one half tan inverse of u plus u over two times one plus u squared plus c2. Okay, Whew, that was a little more work than the first one. Now let's put it all together. All together, remember we have that one third out front and I promised I wouldn't forget. Okay, I'm not forgetting it. One third times the first integral gave us tan inverse of u, and then we have minus this result. So minus one half tan inverse of u minus one half u over one plus u squared. And then now I'll say plus c, where c is who? Well, my c1 would have been here minus C2 all times a third. So I'll say C is one third times C1 minus C2. Your instructor may not make you keep track of your constants so precisely, but I do because it's something you're gonna need later if you take differential equations and whatnot. So I just train my students from the start. That way they don't have to unlearn any bad habits. Okay, do you see how these are like terms? Oh good. So then I can write it as one half tan inverse of u minus one half u over one plus u squared plus c, there's a one third. Where'd your parentheses go? Okay, and then I can factor out one half from both of these and go back and replace u with x cubed. Remember we made that substitution way in the beginning of the problem? Yes, so now we have 1 sixth times tan inverse x cubed minus x cubed over 1 plus x cubed squared would be x to the sixth plus c. I thought this was just fabulous. What a stunning little problem. Okay, and there you have it. Did you do it correctly? Did you take a different route? I'm very curious to hear, so please let me know in the comments below. And please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Share it with whoever you think would enjoy it, your friends, classmates, neighbor, barista, massage therapist, what have it what have you. And also, if you need more help with your integration techniques or other calculus topics, I have everything organized into my playlists here on my YouTube channel, as well as more short form content on Instagram and TikTok, Math with Professor B. Thank you guys.